Good evening. Here is the world news from BGI TV, Baban Bagrede Imo TV. I am Mori Rebila Lawal. First are the major headlines for the world news. Nigerian government approved AK-47 for Katsina outfit. Bondo will buy Amotekun arms. Governor Autumn condemns reports someone murdered someone in UK. Buhari regime's court order will force lecturers to migrate from Nigeria. IPOP threatens Nigerian army, Governor Uzodima over destruction of communities. Kidnappers return to Obomosho, abduct Togolese, injures youth. 14 killed as suspected eight men attack Benue community. Nigerians kicked as dawn allegedly assault police orderly. On foreign, Okuta Yebia return our stolen diamonds, South Africans, Indians tell British monarch. On sport, Indidi out of Nigeria's court versus Algeria. The news in detail. Ondo Governor Rotimi Akadulu has lambasted the federal government of Nigeria, noting that the country cannot have two systems. In a statement on Thursday, Akadulu reacted to the video showing the Castina security outfit obtaining the approval to bear arms. The governor said this followed government's denial of the Western Nigeria Security Network and Moteco Corps to carry assault rifles despite terror attacks. Akredulu noted that denying Amatekun the right to legitimately bear arms is a repudiation of the basis of true federalism, which we have been clamoring for. That Kassina was able to arm its state security force with a display of AK-47 means we are pursuing one country, two system solution to the national question. If the Kassina situation covering advantages on some in the face of commonly faced existential threat, it means that our unitary policing system, which has failed, is a deliberate method of subjugation which must be challenged. Moving to the next story from Benue State. Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State has debunked report, making the round that one of his sons murdered someone outside Nigeria. Daily Post reports that speculations emerged online, particularly on Facebook, a few days ago that the governor's recent trips to the United Kingdom was a certain case of alleged murder involving his unidentified son. But reacting to the Facebook post by one, the Benue Emancipator, Autumn, in a statement by a special advisor on media and publicity, Tave Ekase, described the allegation as politics taken too far. The statement said none of the governor's children has been involved in any murder case or a violence-related incident at home and abroad, asking the posters to show valid evidence that would back their allegation. The statement reads in part, We saw a post on social media made by one Benjamin Benjamin BJU and shared by several others alleging that Governor Samuel Orton's son murdered someone abroad. We find the social media post as politics taken too far. The post is not only false and malicious, but is also targeted at tarnishing the hard-earned reputation of the governor. Moving on to the next story. President of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, Emmanuel Oshodeke, has described as a catastrophe a court judgment ordering lecturers to return to the classroom. On Wednesday, the National Industrial Court ordered ASU to suspend its ongoing strike and return to work. Mr. Oshodeke warned that the judgment would cause more university lecturers to migrate from Nigeria. He said the federal government failed to implement its agreement with the union and was now forcing lecturers to return to class when they have not been paid seven-month salaries. Speaking in Chan Channel TV interview on Wednesday, Mr. Oshodeke said, let me tell you the catastrophe of what has just happened. The last time this happened was during the military era. I can assure you, when the strike is over, a large number of our lecturers are going to migrate from this country. Moving on to form of stories from IPOP. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, has declared its readiness to engage in the battle with the Nigerian army and Governor Oku Zodema of Imo State over the recent attack and destruction of ancient Eke Utu to market in the Imo State. In a statement by its media and publicity secretary, Ima Powerful, IPOP lamented that the attack, which is described as unprovoked, has ruined the livelihoods of many people in the states and beyond. The separatist group asked if the criminals, whom the Nigerian army claimed it was after all shops and provisions in the market or stay in places that soldiers wanted to burn. IPOP described the attack on the market as abominable, adding that we will endure 
and they will regret their actions in fullness of time. Or Uzaduma, wait for your recompense because you are crossed the red line by burning down one of the oldest markets in Ebola, it's said. From that story to Southwest, after about two months break without any report of abduction in Ogomosho or your state, kidnappers have returned to the area they post gathered. Correspondent learns that the kidnappers who have been in the business of kidnapping innocent citizens and collecting huge sums of money have returned to the area to kidnap a Togolese. The report recalls that no fewer than four people were abducted in the area between July 16th and 28th this year. Two of them were released after some amount of money was paid, while two of the victims were killed by abductors after five million naira was paid. One of the victims, Christopher Bakari, a farm supervisor at the farm of a former governor of your state, late Christopher Alao Akala, was abducted on Saturday, 16th July, at Javata in a secondary local government area of the state. A private hospital owner, Baba Rashid, was also abducted on Friday, 22nd July, in the same local government area. A hotelier, Mr. Benga Olabi, and one of his staff, Rachel Abiola of Badele, were also kidnapped at the Aba area in Ogomosho on Thursday, 28th July. Moving on to the next story from various states as well, suspected X-Men have killed 14 people in a fresh attack on the Mchia community in local, local government area of Benue State. Mchia is a settlement between Abeda and Ain, located at Uba Ain Road, local, local government area in the north central states. The special advisor to the government on security matters, Colonel Paul Amba, retired, confirmed this to journalists after a security council meeting in Makudi, the state capital. He said the attack occurred on Wednesday night while the Edmen, fully armed, stormed the community around 9 p.m. Meanwhile, troops of Operation Wells Chalk have thwarted an attack on the Otese internally displaced persons IDP camp in the Guma, local government area of the states. Commander of Operation Wells Chalk, Major General Kevin Alibe, disclosed this to Channel's Television in an interview, saying the troops killed the X-Men in the counter-offensive operation. Moving on to the next story, Nigerians on Thursday faulted the de deployment of police orderly for the protection of a university professor after the officer was allegedly beaten by the dawn. The female officer, who was assigned to a female professor identified as one DK Zena, was said to have been admitted to a hospital after she was allegedly tortured on the order of a principal. The incident, it was gathered, happened at the area 11 axis of the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. The orderly was said to have been assigned to the dawn by the police force headquarters in Abuja. A video clip showing the officer in uniform bleeding seated on the floor and asking to be taken to the hospital for medical attention has gone viral since. Reacting to the incident on Twitter, a user as Tunapa said, I pray this woman, Professor Diki Zena, is not left to go on the cheap, so much for her being a mad academic. Another user at Baby Sarah Roth, who is Professor Zena Diki and why does she have an orderly attached to her? So many of these on social media going viral. To some foreign story, upon the Queen's death, South Africans started trading great star of Africa on Twitter with tweets asking the biggest stone caught from the Colonial Diamond be returned. Calls for the return of stolen artifacts have been removed and renewed following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, Britain's longest reigning monarch. Citizens of South Africa and India said their countries own some of the world's most expensive treasures used by British monarch and have asked the royal family to return them to their countries of origin. Upon the Queen's death, South Africans started trending Great Star of Africa on Twitter with tweets asking that the biggest stone caught from the Colonial Diamond discovered in the South African mine in 1905 be returned. The Great Star of Africa or Colonial One Diamond is caught from a larger gem that was mined in South Africa in 1905 and added over to the British royal family by South Africa's colonial authorities. It is currently mounted on a royal scepter belonging to the Queen. It was added to the royal scepter with a cross, which dates back to 1600 and used during coronation ceremonies in 1910. It is also on public display in the Jewel House at the Tower of London. It is the largest gem quality on court diamond ever found. Now to the last story on sports. 
The Nigeria Football Federation NFF has confirmed that Wilfred Indy will play no part in the Super Eagles friendly against Algeria. The Leicester City midfielder sustained an injury in training on Wednesday evening, which has effectively ruled him out of the friendlies. Indy has also left the team's Marriott Hotel camp in Constantine for England to get forward treatments on the injury. His injury has limited the options available to head coach Josip Pacero in midfield. Alex Iwobi, Frank Onyeka, and new invitee Rafael Onyedika are the only midfielders left in the squad. Pacero has had to reduce his squad following injuries to some of the invited players so far. Skipper of the team, Amin Musa, Leon Badogun, Henry Oyekuru, Emmanuel Dennis, and Samuel Chukwese will all miss the friendlies as a result of injury. That's conclude the world news from BGI TV before we go some quick advice. Nigerian government approved AK-47 for Katsina outfit. Ondo will buy for Amotekun. Governor Autumn condemns report son murdered someone in UK. Buhari's regime court order will force lecturers to migrate from Nigeria. And on sport, Indy out of Nigeria's court versus Algeria. For more stories on YouTube, our handle is Baba Bagede Imo TV. Kindly subscribe and click on the notification bell, select option all, and to have access for our broadcast on Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawi Adebayo. Please like and follow the page on Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For other placement of your goods and services, coverage of events and functions, please dial the phone number streaming on your screen for advert placements only. Thank you for watching. I am Mori Rebila Lala. Oh, na, na, na. If you want to know what's going on in city, or you want to listen to the latest news and gist, no stress, oh, just into BGI TV. BGI TV. I want to know